So my name is uh, Kathy Barrett, and I work with Cornell's Pro Dairy Program with um, Jenny. Um, my, I'm actually out of the animal science department. I'm an extension associate, so I work in the field of dairy management, the, you know, the, the barn end of things. And um, my primary, primary program focus has been, in the last few years, has been um, discussion groups. We call them dairy profit discussion groups. And as part of this program, Jenny and uh, Kurt Gooch, he's another one of our colleagues, I think most of you probably have heard of, um, had come to me with this concept of doing the discussion group format, but doing it virtually online for um, farms that have anaerobic digesters. So that's what I'm going to uh, talk about today, a, a bit about what a discussion group is and, um, and how they operate, and then more specifically about the anaerobic digester group, so that you can get a feel for how that, that process worked. Okay, <laughs> so the, there are farmer discussion groups and um, we're going to focus on the virtual ones. So um, farmer discussion groups, I, I just want to explain what they are so that we're all on the same page because um, you know, there are different types of farmer groups out there and um, some of them are uh, more like profit teams or advisory teams where you have one farm that's being analyzed and uh, a group has gotten together of consultants and um, the people that they work with to just look at that one farm, okay? This is a little bit different. These are discussion groups where it's a group of farmers that get together and discuss things that are pertinent to them on their farm. So they're small groups, um, usually anywhere from uh, five to 15 people. We really try to keep them small. Um, there are some larger groups that go to 20 or 25, but the concept is such that you want the people to be able to sit around the table and interact with each other. And you can see that as the group gets bigger, that's much more difficult to do. So we, the, the focus is really just to have a handful of people sitting around that table. And key to this is that they have something in common. So that commonality can be anaerobic digesters. They all have anaerobic digesters. It could be that they're uh, grazing farms. It could be there's a group of feed managers. Uh, since we focus on dairy, that those are the kinds of um, groups that we have going on in New York, but it can certainly go beyond that. So the, the idea is that these folks come in, they have a commonality so that the discussion is pertinent to them. So when, as they sit around the table, we're not hearing like, oh, that's just for small farms, that's just for large farms, that's just for this or for that. The, we've already selected the group so that the conversation will be pertinent to them. So that's important. So small group, commonality, that the groups be self-directed, that the ideas of what the group's going to discuss comes from that group. So it's not like a workshop or a seminar where you say, well, the group's going to meet this many times, and these are the topics we're going to cover. You bring the group together, and then they decide what they want to talk about. So it makes it so that there's um, a lot of buy-in, as well as that the conversation really matters to them and really is something that they're, they're interested in talking about. And then probably the most important part is that the emphasis is on the farmer's knowledge. So just as um, Jenny was talking about with anaerobic digesters, she doesn't operate one. What do you do when, when you need to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to fix an engine? You get that information from other people who have been there, done that. And that's what's really valuable about these discussion groups, whether they're sitting around the table or whether it's virtual. So, and farmers like this. You know, the reason that I had gotten into doing this sort of work was um, when I was a county agent in New York, you know, this was many moons ago, I, um, I can remember setting up a, a dairy seminar or a dairy conference, and, you know, the, we had the morning program, and then I got online for lunch. And while I'm walking through the line on lunch, a farmer says to me, you know, this is a really good program, but it's all for large farms. You know, mm -hmm. this really isn't pertinent to me. And then, you know, a few minutes later, the same lunch line, the same program, I had somebody say, you know, this is a good program, but it's all for small farmers, you know, it, it's really, it doesn't, it? and so I thought, oh, geez, you know, it's, you know, I was trying to hit everybody, and everybody thinks I missed them, and then at the same time, I've heard, and maybe you folks have heard this too, I, I imagine you have, you go, you, have, you put a program, you, you know, get everybody lined up, and you do the speakers, and then later you hear the farmers say, you know, the best part of that program was when I sat around the table at lunch and talked to the other farmers. I thought, well, why don't we just cut to the chase here and get them sitting around the table, okay? And so that's really sort of where my interest in these discussion groups came. So it's not just, um, it's not the same as like when they get together for breakfast. You know, there's more focus to it and you've got the group there that um, is, has the same sort of interest. 
So it's a, um, you know, it's sort of a, a, a more formalized sitting around the table uh, at lunch discussing the topics that you've heard about earlier today or, or whatever. And then lastly, that these groups have to be well facilitated. You really can't just say, you know what, we'll meet here, throw something on the table and just talk. You really need somebody who's going to take the lead, not only in the management of getting the group together and all that sort of thing, but also in keeping the discussion on track, making sure that the topic is um, pertinent to the group, but as, as well as um, that the group feels like you know everybody's being heard, that we all, everyone has a chance to talk, that you open, ask open-ended questions, that sort of thing. So it's important that the group be well facilitated. So this is for groups just in general. And the, you know, I kind of went through some of this already. The reason that they, that we've, so I, I, I should just back up for a minute. So our discussion group project has been going on for, we're ending the fifth year. And in the course of that year, there's probably been 60 groups that have formed um, throughout New York. Most of them are um, facilitated by the local extension person. Um, there are 30 that are meeting right now. So they kind of, the groups meet, they may meet for a year or two and then not meet when a new group forms. It's sort of a, an evolving process. So, and you know, when I first came to uh, the program, uh, the, to Cornell Allen was kind of propagating this idea, I was surprised by how quickly folks picked up on this. They really thought, you know, this is something that farmers want to do. The response was really excellent, much more than I anticipated. And it really comes down to just that farmers learn from other farmers and they want to have an opportunity to sit across the table and talk to other producers that are doing the same thing they're doing, people that they respect, you know, that, that, that sort of expertise is hard to come by. And in our day and age, you get less of that. There is less opportunity for that. Because the room's so busy, we have a lot of technology, the chance to sit around and have an in-depth discussion is not there, like, like perhaps it was in the past. And so this program gives them an opportunity to do that. So they, want to, um, they, they place high value on the information from other farmers. I think we all know that. That's why we do farmer panels and have farmers uh, come and speak at our programs. Um, it offers an opportunity for new ideas and perspectives to be brought to the group and discussed by other folks that, have, that are implementing those, those new ideas. So I, I guess the way I would look at it is, you know, um, so with an anaerobic digest, with a, uh, you know, some technology be introduced, you know, and there's expertise and there's, you know, technical information. But when a farmer really wants to make a change, being able to talk to somebody else who's either going through that thought process or maybe has already implemented that technology, that's where they sort of, the, the, uh, the, the thinking process sort of starts to become more integrated and they start thinking about how they can be able, to, they might or might not be able to implement it on their farm. And that's not just true of producers. I mean, that's as, a, as adults, that's sort of how we work. As we've discussed back and forth, we integrate it into our, our knowledge base and then make decisions from, from there. Challenges current thinking and then um, kind of gives a big picture when you, you know, you get off your own farm and start talking to other folks, even if it's just down the road. Um, you know, it kind of makes, it runs your perspective. And then um, lastly, if, you know, as a, ag educators, I think we kind of focus on the technical aspects and that the discussion be substantive. To, and that's all very important. But I got to tell you, this networking is really valuable. Producers really feel like that after they've had a chance to meet with a group and it's on a continual basis, you know, it's a small group, they've talked about a lot of things, they really feel like they, um, and many times it's a friendship, but even just even if it's not a friendship, it's sort of a, like a, um, you know, a professional network that they've developed for their, among their own producers. So um, they place a really high value on that, to having the opportunity to really get to know other people and their businesses more so than you would just when you kind of socialize, you know, so that, that networking is really important. So with that, so that's the, the discussion group uh, format. That's how we, we uh, have, um, have at least implemented it in, uh, in New York and it's worked pretty well. Um, we get a lot of positive feedback for it and we've got groups forming all the time. But, you know, I've always been like the, um, the one that says, you know, you have to get them at the table. They have to look at each other. I'd, I'd have um, extension folks say, well, why don't we just do conference calls because people are all over the place. And I'd say, well, once you have a group started, you can do that once in a while just to get information out or just feel like a need. But on the whole, people need to be able to see each other's faces and to have the opportunity to really talk. And then, um, but then 
we are looking at you know things like getting people together, the travel time, that sort of thing. I'll tell you, some groups meet um, like from noon to noon. They, they meet only twice a year because they're spread out across the state, and they come together and meet. Um, you know, they meet at noon, have a program, stay overnight, visit a farm, and then they're, then they're done, and they have the opportunity to interact that way. But for this um, anaerobic uh, group, we thought, well, you know. Uh, we didn't really see that that was a need, that there, was, there are conferences and stuff that they could um, do an overnight thing. What they really wanted to be able to do is to meet on a more regular basis, but still eliminate that travel time. So we came up with this idea of doing it online in a, in a manner that lets them, be, uh, allows them to see each other, to be able to interact in a way that goes a step beyond the conference call idea. So um, we went ahead and um, investigated a bunch of uh, types of alternatives to how this might, might work. And um, what we came up with actually has worked out pretty well. So let me just tell you a little bit about that. The, um, so we had, so the, you know, I, the last one about the uh, last slide was this is not a webinar. And I, I guess I want to make sure that folks understand that this is a discussion. We don't put up a slide and have a speaker and, that sort of thing is a little different than that type of a, a program. Although I have to tell you, uh, webinars have um, been uh, very successful in, in New York as well, but it's a little bit different than that, that type of a program. So there are about 20 farms in New York that have um, anaerobic digesters. And on our meetings, our online meetings, we probably have about 10 that will join the, the, uh, the group at any one time. <laughs> There's a core of probably three or four, and actually this is true of most discussion groups that are always there, always there. Um, we've met uh, three or four times in the last year, year and a half, and um, the meetings are about an hour, an hour and a half long, and they're online. They, so the format is that we have a topic usually determined ahead of time, something um, that people are interested in. So the, the uh, biovest cleanup was one of them. Uh, uh, remote net metering, um, th that sort of thing. Um, and then we just open it up to discussion and they'll talk for an hour or so and then uh, we move on. Um, we do record the meetings for the participants. We don't use them then uh, for other folks. Um, we just use them in case somebody who wanted to be at the meeting couldn't be there. They can listen if they like to. Or if somebody wants to go back and hear what somebody had to say, didn't catch the whole thing, they, they can do that as well. And then uh, Jenny and I facilitate this. So just to get a kind of a picture in your mind how this works, we use a, a program called GoToMeeting. You can use other ones, but that's the ones we use. And the reason actually we ended up on that one uh, was at the time it was the, the, the service that would give us the most uh, video faces, you know, so we could get around six to eight faces up there. So that was important to us. I will tell you, like, Jenny and I only use do it together so we only use one screen, one of those faces, so we try to consolidate it that way. That's why there'll be as many as 10 on, but we do that, a couple of them will get together on, on the farm or there'll be, uh, you know, the, Purdue, the the digester person that on the farm as well as the, the farm owner. So, um, so you're sitting in front of your computer, everybody uh, gets online, the, the faces pop up, that we use, and they use the online audio and the, the uh, webcams. And then um, Jenny and I will start it off about what the program is and you know what we're talking about today. And then we open it up for discussion. So the, the key is, and this was really important to me in particular, is that as, you're, as they're, you're sitting in front of your screen and you see everybody else's face, you, know, you can see whether somebody's smiling when they said that, they were kidding. You know how you're on a conference call, sometimes you're like, I hope they were kidding. You know, you know, or are you wondering if they're rolling their eyes or you know whatever? So you have their faces right there. You can see if they start to you know do other work. And um, so you know you have those faces, and you get that interaction that you can't get when you when you can't see people. Now it's not the same as being across the table, but it's still a step um, above being just just on the phone. So you have all these faces here. You can um, everybody can hear each other. Um, and see each other, so every, everybody else on their screen is seeing you as well as everybody else. And then we just talk back and forth, and it works out very nicely. In addition, you can, if you have um, information that you want to put on people's screens, that, that can go up and their faces will be superimposed over the screen. You can switch it so that the, uh, so one of the other farmers can put something up, you know, so that if they have some information that they want to share, 
or you could do that with um, another presenter if you, if you so choose. We've just done it with uh, the producers. So it's a very nice way to be able to get the visual contact as well as the information out to folks, have a discussion back and forth, and eliminate that travel time, which for us is going to be substantial. You know, it's hard to get farmers to say, okay, I'll commit to a two hour, three hour drive if we're lucky. Some of them would have been even further for a meeting that's going to be an hour or two hours long. And they really didn't want longer meetings. Those opportunities, as you can see from uh, some of the work Jenny was presenting earlier, are available as, as well as other types of programs. They're really looking for a place where they could quickly interact with other producers, talk to each other, get some information, build some relationships, and then move on. So it's really nice for them as well. You can see that they'll be they'll log on, they'll be at their, their desk doing other stuff, the meeting starts, stops, talk for a while, get some good information back and forth, and then go on with their day. So we found it to uh, work out pretty well. And I would really recommend the face aspect of it. That it, is, it may not sound at first like, well, what's the big deal if you can see people? But it really is integral to the success of the discussion and to the way that people inter interact, interact with each other. So anyway, that's, uh, that's where we came out with that. So there are a couple of considerations when you're going to do this online. And the first one is your internet connection is key. So I don't know about you folks, but by us, you know, uh, it's really spotty how well, how good a connection you have. What we did find was that farmers who had digesters tended to have their own Wi-Fi set up on the farm. So, you know, their, their system was almost better than what Jenny and I had to work with. So that was a good thing. I, you know, I would, um, I, I would like to see us do some of this with some small farmers who feel like they can't get away even for um, you know, a, an afternoon. But I am really concerned about the, uh, the internet connection. If they don't have that kind of a fast internet connection, you, it, it's not effective. It really isn't. The faces, um, you can only have one face up or it's choppy and it, it just doesn't work. So I would say to you that that's key to make sure that each of the uh, producers has an internet connection internet connection that's fast enough to support this. So what Jenny and I do is we go down to campus and we have a, a, a faster connection there. So that, that works out for us. And as far as the technology goes, I wondered about this. Like, you know, <coughs> there, how farmers would feel about sitting in front of a computer and the webcam and a little bit. And then, uh, you know, we found out that they're a lot more comfortable with it than I had anticipated. I think, first of all, the webinar thing, you know, a lot of them have done these webinars, so they're much more comfortable about sitting in front of the computer and interacting and, you know, that sort of thing. Not in a discussion, but getting information in that way. And then, um, you know, I bought a few webcams in case somebody said, I don't have a webcam for my computer. Well, my computer was not without a webcam. I mean, most all of them, if, you, if they're, mine's five years old, so I guess if you're four or three years old, you have newer equipment, they all have a webcam built in, so that was a, a non-issue. Um, using the, the GoToMeeting software, you know, we did have to kind of work through that a little bit with everybody, making sure they had it downloaded. It's not hard, but just making sure everybody had it and knew what to do, and when I sent them a meeting notice, how to respond, and, and that sort of thing. Um, and I think that would probably be true no matter what service you use. So that was a little bit of a process, but not, not bad. Um, and then I would recommend that the facilitators practice using the service, because even though these, it's not hard at, at all, I would just tell you that there are you know, you click on this, you click on that, you can turn this on, you can do that. And when you're in the discussion, you really don't want to be like, oh, was I supposed to click there? Was I supposed to, you know, there's a, like a rhythm to it. And so if you practice it a few times, Jenny and I got online and did this back and forth. Um, and you can be more familiar with it and more comfortable with it. And the more you do it, you know, the easier it becomes. It's really worthwhile so that you're not, um, you don't have 10 other people online with their faces now you can see them being frustrated because you couldn't <laughs> click on whatever. Um, it's a good idea to practice a few times. And it's not a difficult thing to do. I mean, you can do it from across the state, you know, but you don't have to be in the same place even. Um, and then I would recommend to, uh, you have two facilitators, at least in the, in the beginning. Uh, we are, we'll probably stick with two facilitators when you're actually doing the meeting. Because one person needs to be focused on the discussion, making sure that it's staying on topic, that people are having the opportunity to, to speak. That the you know that the the, the gist of the discussions is um, valuable to all the people that are, are involved, and then you need somebody else who can say, um, you know, okay, why don't we ask so and so to put up his screen? Why don't you know sort of the, the technical end of it? And with Jenny and I, we switch that back and forth. When she's in the middle of the discussion, I'll work on that end. When 
I'm in the middle of the discussion, and she picks it up. So it's just a really good thing. And when there's a the wedge, it's a really good thing, because then somebody else can focus on getting so-and-so online, you know, like one producer online while the other person keeps the discussion going. So I would just recommend that if you, um, I, I, I imagine if you got really good at it, you could do it on your own. I don't, I think that what, the way Jenny and I will go is always to have two people. So some of you who do a lot of webinars, I don't do a lot of webinars, I've been on them, but I haven't run them. Is that pretty standard that you have two folks? So this is no different than that. Yeah. Okay. Lost my signal. Is that is that what you guys do? You just cut off the signal. You're done. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I just have a couple more. Do I have a couple more minutes? Yes. No. Try to wrap it up. Okay. So anyway, uh, maybe I'll go past this because I've kind of uh, already talked about it. The facilitator's roles to keep the meeting on target, to do all the pre-management stuff. I guess I would uh, just briefly say, if you're interested in starting a group, the thing to do is to get, go to one or two farmers that you think would be interested in this concept, get their take on it, would they want to do it or not. I would say do this in person so that you can see whether they really are interested or not. Then um, make your list of producers that you think would have that commonality, in this case the, uh, the 80 uh, farmers. Go to them, set the stage, let them know that it's a discussion, not a workshop, not a seminar and then follow through from there. So that's usually the question I get is, no matter what type of group, how do you get them started? And I would say start with the key farmer and build, build from there, and build your group from there. Decide whether the group will be closed or open. If it's closed, that means you've got a set group, just AD farmers, these people, that's who you send the meeting information to, that's who you uh, invite to be, attend, which is the type of group I like the best um, because you really get a continuity going and some networking going. The, um, the other way to do it is to say, oh, you know, all calf raisers who are interested in being a part of this can come and then see who um, shows up. So that's another way to go about it. And then, um, and I would just be sure to um, make, to, uh, before the meeting starts, that the folks understand what it is they're getting themselves into, that it's a discussion, they're not going to be able to sit back and just listen, that they, they need to participate to make this worthwhile, and that there are some expectations of confidentiality and, um, you know, just basic types of uh, etiquette that um, goes across being being part of a, a group. So we, we do have some groups that share economic data, and we actually ask them to sign confidentiality agreements. Most of them, we don't go that far, but we do set the stages. Like, you know what, what gets said in the group, let's keep it here, okay? So that's uh, sort of the thing there. And then time commitment. Um, Jenny and I probably spent total, the two of us together, about 10 hours getting the group set up. That's in part because we pretty much knew the producers, so it wasn't a lot of legwork getting that done. Um, most of that was working through the system, picking out which, uh, which uh, software program we were going to use, and going from there, and then practicing, and that sort of thing. So it's really not all that time consuming. And then the meetings are probably two to three hours, with an hour of that being the meeting. Um, just making sure that uh, you know the farmers all have are all set to go and have their um, th they'll be able to sign on and, and use the technology and then um, go from there. So that's kind of where, in a nutshell, what you sort of expect from this type of a of a program. And I just had one last thing, and that is, you know, if um, oh, this is uh, you know goes beyond just dairy. You can use this with any kind of. Group. One last thing is that you know if you do have a technology glitch, we did on our second meeting. The first one went great. Second one did not. We had a, a, a connection issue. You know, I was really concerned, you know, you just hate when that happens because basically we just have to say, all right, we'll try this again another day. Um, but you know what, I, I really worried that, okay, so now we've had this bad experience, the next time we do this, nobody will sign on, they'll be like, Psh, you know, we're not going to be bothered. And that really wasn't the case. They, they went ahead and, and still participated. So I think, you know, people will, if they see you honestly trying and seeing that it's just a, a glitch, they'll give you another try. I don't know if they, we, if it didn't work again, what would happen, but, you know, they, they would give you another try. So if you do have a technology glitch, I would just say, you know, don't give up on it. Just, you know, see, straighten it out and, and go from there. So with that, I'll stop there for you. What kind of effectiveness have you had with other interest groups outside of, I mean, people that are involved in the digestion group are obviously going to be more predisposed to technology and so mm -hmm. forth and embracing of it. Um, has anyone ever thought about putting together an IT group? To help facilitate farmers' adoption of information technology and support so they can do stuff like this. Yeah, you know, the only, the only one we've done so far this way, this virtual way, is the AD group, so we have not taken it yeah. a step further. Those are, those are like, like I was saying, I'd like to see this used with small farmers who feel like they can't get away. We haven't yeah. worked out the issues just like what you're talking about, you know, having a group together that would address that.
So you know what? It's free uh, most of the time. You can use it free. I actually, to be able to get those faces, it was $300 a year. But you know what? For us, um, so I was able to cover that with some grant funding. Um, I can tell you for travel wise, you could, you know, one meeting and people will say, the brew could say that in gas. So I would say if when we don't have grant funding, I don't think it'd be any issue for us to say, to the, you know, everybody chip in 20 bucks for the year so that we could, could do this. I mean, just for time and gas pays for itself. So it, it wasn't, a, wasn't a problem. That, yeah, it, wasn't. it was, it was affordable. 